So happy Monday. Um, I'm going to take you guys through some information and um, I'm not going to be able to be looking at this screen. So I'm going to stop my video and share my screen with you. So this week's work for you seventh graders is pretty simple. Um, you can find this document in Google Classroom. Um, actually, let me share that. Here we go. That was not what I wanted to share. Let's try that again. Okay. Um, so, you guys should be able to see now, um, what I have here on my screen is, this is third period, but it's the same for first and fourth. I've given you two assignments this week, voc vocabulary like terms. Um, I've noticed a couple of you have already been in the like terms flow cab. Um, you might want to go check it again because I have missed clicking video, so you'll want to watch the video. Um, and then there's this like terms practice which is the document I'm going to show you with my um, doc camera in a minute on how to do it. But before we do that, there is so much information coming out of Showalter this week that I put together a slideshow. I will leave this slideshow in Google Classroom so you can go back to it. Um, but I definitely wanted to go through it with you because there's so much information. So um, there's information on schedule, grades, and more. So I wanted you to know what the teachers have been talking about in the background. Um, how much work should students expect? And this is pretty much what you should expect. Um, each teacher will post 20 to 30 minutes of learning work to do per day. That's about two and a half to three hours of work per class for the week. Or think about you should be spending about two and a half to three hours working each day to stay caught up. Let your teachers know if you can't get the work done in that amount of time. Uh, this information will be posted in Google Classroom, so check your classroom regularly. Um, I will be consistent with posting my new work on Monday and on Wednesday, if need be, I'll post something um, if we need to uh, do some checking in or if I've had questions to people um, and made video. Um, the sketch I'm going to show you on the next page is a general guide to help you plan your week. If what you're already doing is working, great, but some of you asked for help with a schedule last week in our class meeting. And then a schedule for <laughs> this big word we've been throwing around in teacher talks is synchronous or live learning. Um, so that's when we're doing our activities together in our Zoom. Uh, your teachers will let you know in Google Classroom of spe specific times and how to log in. So here's the plan for new learning. The recommendation is that you get up in the morning, check Google Classroom, do any work you haven't finished. Um, the recommendation is you spend these times and hopefully your teachers are scheduling your meetings or your uh, Zoom sessions during these time frames. So if you look here, 1230 to 230 on Wednesday is math. Um, I had been starting a little bit earlier at noon, but we're going to be starting at 1230 now for seventh grade. Um, this looks a little confusing down here. There won't be something new from homeroom every single day. It's just a, if you haven't checked yet, check. Um, as you wrap up your day, check and see if anything new has been posted so you can get it in your head what you need to do the next day. So basically with grades, what you had at the end of third quarter is what you still have. Um, your grade can't drop, but it can go up. So if you want to go back and redo any work you've done in the past that you didn't like the grade or if you had it missing, you can go and redo it and participation is going to potentially increase grades for you. So if you were a student who had a C at the end of third quarter, doing the work I'm posting every week is going to improve that grade. There's going to be two Showalter parades of teachers and staff coming through to wave hello to you guys. The first one is tomorrow and it starts at 1.30. Well, the first one is going to start here um, at Joseph Foster's park parking lot 
and it will go this direction. So we will go clockwise. And then after that, we will go and uh, start at the end of the Tukwila Community Center parking lot and be down in the Allentown area. We couldn't do the whole community in one day. So the second parade is going to be on May 20th and you can see the maps here. So this day uh, we're starting at the same park but we're gonna do that upper area that does up by um, Tukwila Elementary. And then finally on the second day, uh, May 20th next week, we'll be starting um, at Foster High School. This feels wrong to me. I feel like that's the same map. So I might change that before I post the slideshow for you guys. Uh, yearbooks are on sale. Our yearbook staff have finished it. Um, you can pay for it at this website and then um, pickup will most likely be at the district office towards um, the last part of June when we would have been ending school. They're being printed right now, so we don't have them yet, but um, they look really good. And then I thought you might want to see some pictures that Mr. Christopher sent to the teachers of what's going on inside Showalter. Um, the office is going to have more open space to be able to see. Look at how much bigger the gym is. And the same, look at that, all that new space back there is new for the commons. So with that, I want to switch screens and talk a little bit about the math for this week. For some of you, this will feel like review. I feel like you've done this in sixth grade math, but it's really important for eighth grade math that you're competent at it. Um, and so what I have in front of me is the printout, like it's being passed out um, where they're passing out packets and lunches and breakfast, but the same activity is online in Google Classroom and you do not need paper to do this. You can do it completely online. So after you watch vocabulary and you engage in those activities, I want you to take a look at this. So algebraic expressions contain terms. Each of these things here is a term. So this has three terms, 6x, 8, and 2x. So terms can be just numbers or they can be numbers and variables. A coefficient is a number multiplied by a variable. So in this case, the six is the coefficient. It's just the number that's multiplied by that variable. A variable is a symbol used to represent a quantity that can change. So in this case, x is the variable. And a constant is a numerical value that does not change, is not attached to a variable. Basically, just a plain old number has a fancier name where it's called a constant. So in this expression, there are three terms, 6x, 8, and 2x. 6x, 6 is the coefficient, 2 is the coefficient of 2x, and those two things can be added together because their variable is x. Like terms are terms that contain the same variables raised to the same power. So 6x and 2x are like terms, and so an 8 in this case is the constant, but when I add 6x and 2x, I get 8x. So this expression could be rewritten as 8x plus 8. So some confusion happens. People want to make equal signs, and algebraic expressions don't have an equal sign. Equations have an equal sign. That's what equa in equation stands for. It stands for the equal part of it. Okay. So this page on Google Classroom is in color. I don't have a color printer at home, so mine is not in color. Color is really helpful when you're working on these things because you can use color to help you identify like terms. So when I look up here at this, 5x and negative 2x are the same because they both have just a regular x. 4 and 2 are the same because they're constants, they're just regular numbers. And then negative 3y is its own. So I use color on this to show this stays the same because it has no other like term. But 5x and negative 2x were combined and we took the 5 and the negative 2 and we got 3 because 5 minus 2 is 3. So 5x minus 2x is 3x. And then the constants also got combined. 
four and two were added to give us six. So with that, I wanted to do a little guided practice together. I have eight M and I see another variable M here. Notice when I do that circling, I'm keeping that positive sign. This says negative G and this is positive 13 G and that leaves the eight or negative eight all by itself. So I'm gonna combine these like terms, 8M plus 3M plus 13G minus G minus eight. So what I've done here is I've taken the two that I put in green and put them together. That's the combining like terms. That's where that phrase comes from. There's my blue ones <clears throat> and my pink one. <clears throat> 8 and 3 are 11, so this becomes 11m. 13g minus g, well, there's an invisible one there. Whenever you have a, a variable with nothing in front of it, there's a one there. So 13 minus 1 is going to give us plus 12g minus 8. So just to add to the color coding to keep this clear, this is what we've ended up with. So I'm moving on to the second guided practice. I get 4B plus B. Now this has an AB, but AB is not the same as just B. So this is a separate term. And it doesn't have any like terms in this expression, but plus three and plus one are like terms. So I'm going to have 4B plus B, which really is an invisible 1B, plus 4AB, plus 3, minus 1. Like terms, all by itself without any partners, and like terms. So this gets rewritten as 5B, plus 4AB, plus 2. This came from the blues. This has not changed. And this is it. And that's it. That means it's finished. I can't do anything else with that because we don't know what the B stands for or the A stands for. So with that, you don't have to color code, but if you want to, you can. I would like to see you show me the solutions to these expressions. Like how can you combine like terms there? I would like you to do this vocabulary using flowcabulary and the information from this first paper that we talked about. All of this information will help you fill in the blanks here. And then finally, you're going to tell me if these are like terms or unlike terms in this box. And that'll let me know what we need to work on for next week. So let me know if you have any other questions. And I will see you guys on Wednesday, hopefully at our class meeting.